Once we've gone ahead, we've built our groups in our presets, it's time to move to queues. Hi, I'm David Henry from LearnStageLighting.com, and in this video, we're going to continue our series, Five Minutes to Better Lighting, where in just five minutes a day, you can make your lighting better. Also, if you haven't been subscribed here and, and catching all the latest videos, subscribe right now and click that bell so you don't miss a thing. Killer. Now, cues, as I mentioned before, are really what I like to call them is the finished work that you played back on a stage. That never gets old in my ears because it's the truth. It's how they work. For example, if we go into Onyx here, one of my favorite professional lighting console softwares, um, you can see here that all of these buttons are different cues, and as are these faders on the bottom of our screen. And so that brings into question the first part of this video. When you're recording a cue or where, when you're putting it somewhere, do you put it on a fader or do you put it on a button? And what types of cues work best on both? Well, I don't know, but we're going to answer that in the next two videos. Before we get there, though, I, I do know, actually, but it, it can depend a lot on your situation. But before we get there, I want to talk about recording cues, because in this day and age, um, there's a few different ways that consoles store cues, and you really have to understand that to be able to get the most out of your show. Okay, so in the old days and with simpler consoles like NTX DMXs and um, let me think of some other ones off the top of my head. I'm just thinking of a bunch of old school consoles like the ETC Express. Great console. Um, but when we work with consoles like these, uh, when we press record and we make a cue, everything that we take, every fader, every single um, piece of the lighting that we've worked with or that um, really the whole console actually um, gets recorded into that queue or in DMX it's called a preset okay and then when we play it back we see exactly what we saw at the time when we recorded that queue if a light was not on it's not going to be on if a light was on and in a color it's going to be in that color etc this is a good method of writing cues and recording things when you're just starting out but as you begin to do more complex programming or want to be able to have more flexible playback, this isn't a great idea. Because if I stored this look, everything like this, these positions right here um, with this color and all of this as one look, well, then it would be difficult for me to transition to a green blue look like this, right? Uh, because if I wanted to do green blue, then I would have to choose each time a cue that had green blue and also had the position I wanted in it, right? I would be stuck, literally, if I wanted to do, for example, this yellow magenta in this green blue, in this position look, this position look, this one, and this one, okay? So that was just four different position looks. And if I wanted to do two combinations of colors in those four position looks, I would have to write eight cues in a program like DMX uh, under the default settings, okay? Or an old school lighting console. So in a newer console like D Pro or like the Light Shark or like Onyx or like a lot of things that I cover, you build up cues in snippets. You don't generally program everything in a queue. And in fact, you can see I did this in Onyx here. Right here, I've got one row of things that are positions. I've got rows of things that are just colors. I've got some rows here at the bottom. I'm just going to flip out of here so I can show you that just have gobos in them, separate for each type of light. And this can give you a lot of flexibility when you're playing back your cues. And so your, your homework for today, basically, um, what I want you to think about as we're thinking through this is, hey, when you're storing a queue, what do you want to get stored in it? And what do you want to not be stored in it? And uh, if you're using DMXs, there is a function called channel masking. You can watch my video on it or read about it in the manual um, that allows you to set up queues that only affect some certain lights, okay? And this can really be a big help to you because then, like I said, 
to get two color looks with four position looks, you don't have to make eight cues. You just make the four position cues and the two color cues. And you might say, well, that's only six, but it multiplies. You know, here I've got like 20 color looks and about uh, seven, or no, I've got like 16 of these um, looks of position. And if I did like 20 times 16, well, you get the idea. That's a lot and it's hard to keep organized. So as you're building cues, think about what you want to include and what you don't want to include. And then keep enjoying this uh, series that we're doing. Be sure to subscribe and also check us out on Patreon. If you've been enjoying this or any of the other videos we put on Lawrence Stage Lighting, know that it takes a lot of time. It's a load of fun, but I also want to do this for a long time into the future. And to do that, I would love your support on Patreon. It's going to help me to continue to grow and continue to bring out the best content for beginners and intermediate level people in stage lighting. Until then, I will see you tomorrow. We're going to talk about what to program on your faders.